Howdy. My name is Nonad, and I am very tired. <laughs> I feel like I haven't slept in a month. But today I want to talk about something super important that I don't feel like I see enough people talk about enough. Also, before we get started, I know people are really mad at the, like, mirrored posters and the mirrored stuff, so, uh, I'm gonna keep doing it because I think it's funny. <laughs> I'm a jerk. Why do you guys watch me? Today I want to talk about role-playing versus role-playing. There's a big difference, but they're both equally viable gameplay types, and I think people need to stop arguing about which one is better and simply talk about which one works the best for them. If you're not aware, role-playing and role-playing are two pretty different things that people don't talk about often enough. Sometimes people will drop the words and they'll be like, oh, why don't you just try role-playing instead? And it often leads to some confusion. So I wanna make a video really talking about the differences and why they're both viable, along with the pros and cons of each strategy. But before we get to that, I should probably explain what each one is for those of you who are completely lost. Chances are you know what role-playing is. If you're playing a role-playing game, you're kind of expecting to role-play. You are playing a role, you are playing in character. I guess in character is the best way to describe things. If you are going to talk to the shopkeep and ask to buy a greatsword, it'll probably go something like this. So uh, Sinclair walks up to the merchant and uh, he, he stands tall and says, well, you've got a mighty fine establishment here, don't you shopkeep? Well, I must say I have been eyeing the greatsword on the wall, though the craftsmanship does not seem quite up to par with what I've seen. I see you have it listed for 10 gold pieces. I believe I could buy it for 7 gold, 5 silver. Tell me, how does that sound? The interaction from start to finish there was Sinclair. You know, I described Sinclair walking up, and then I simply said everything as Sinclair. This is the most common way of role-playing, and is pretty much what you'll expect to see at most tables. But here's the thing. Not everyone is an actor, not everyone wants to be an actor, and not everyone really wants to speak in character, whether it's a comfort thing or just something they don't find fun. Maybe they're much more into the mechanical side of role-playing games, which is totally fine, contrary to people thinking you need to like one or the other. The pros and cons of role-playing are pretty obvious, you know, you get way more immersed, you care about this character more, and so does everyone else, because they feel like they get to see this character. Now, the cons are a little bit awkward sometimes. First off, you never know, as a player or even as a GM, when they should be rolling for something. You know, it's very common, and I do this all the time as a GM, when my players word something just right, you know, they say something just right, I may not have them roll for it. Like, technically, yes, if Sinclair wants to get that discount on the greatsword he's buying, chances are he'll need to roll Diplomacy or some other skill, depending on the system, to get that discount. But depending on the mood I'm in and how well my player role plays, there's a solid chance that as the GM, I'll just say, yes, of, of course, you, you clearly have a fine eye for craftsmanship, here's that discount. Because it, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to slow down the game with a dice roll, but sometimes I will. Again, it depends on my mood. But that's sort of that, that weird, blurry line with roleplay. Uh, a very common issue with roleplaying is when that player steps up, they give this deep speech, this perfectly rehearsed monologue, and then they nat one their diplomacy check. Like, they clearly just said all of that, they just gave that message, but then they failed their check, so the GM usually has to be like, oh, you got halfway through, but then a bug went up your nose and you sneezed and everyone laughed at you and they hate you. So that's role-playing. There's obviously not a whole lot to talk about with that. If you're playing a role-playing game, chances are you know what role-playing is. But now let's talk about role-playing, which is something that not everybody knows about, and I think it's incredibly important. You can see that this is spelled with two L's instead of an E, and that is simply for the fun naming convention of the two systems, but I do like it as a system, you know? When you are role-playing with two L's, you don't necessarily want or even need to get into character. If I was going to handle as a player role-play, I'm gonna keep pointing to it so you know I'm talking about this one, as a character, if I wanted to role-play with Sinclair, it would go something like this. So Sinclair is going to walk into the store, walk up to the shopkeeper, 
Um, and you said there was a great sword there, right? So Sinclair is going to try to really fancy talk his way through this. You know, he's going to maybe mark, mention something about the craftsmanship, even just BS something out of his butt. Just try his best to sort of swindle the shopkeeper into a solid discount, if that makes sense. This accomplishes the exact same thing as the in-character role-playing from before. They simply chose to describe it, and even if they couldn't necessarily think of that fancy wording, they couldn't think of how to swindle the discount out of the shopkeep themselves, they know that their character could. One of the most important things I've ever heard, and I stand by this, is that you do not have to be charismatic to play a charismatic character. You can absolutely say, I give an inspiring speech to the cowardly people, and you're not, you shouldn't be expected to verbatim spout the Declaration of Independence in character. If you want to do that, cool. That's so phenomenal, and I love seeing people get into character and really express themselves with their words, but not everybody wants to do that. Some people just want to say, I would like to roll diplomacy to inspire my allies, and that is completely fine. One of the huge pros of role-playing is that you don't really ever need to explain what you're trying to do, because that's sort of what you're doing. You know, the GM can go, oh, he's trying to inspire his allies? Roll diplomacy. Oh, he's trying to lie to this person. Like he literally said, I would like to lie to this person. Roll deception. Role-playing is definitely easier on the GM when it comes to the mechanical side of things, and it can often keep the game moving very, very smoothly. What can also happen, though, is something can get lost in translation. When you're simply explaining what you want your character to do, you are giving the GM full liberty to effectively do it for you. It's the sort of situation where if you say, yeah, I'd like to just climb up the cliff face and get up on top of that cliff, and the GM says, okay, you try to climb the cliff face without any kind of climbing equipment, and you fall to your death. And then the character says, oh, well, I would have used my climbing equipment, and the GM says, you didn't say that, and then it gets all clustered. Sort of an extreme example, I don't see that ever happening, and most of the time the GM would be like, oh, okay, you're fine. <laughs> but that's sort of my, my, what I mean by that, is it's almost like a monkey's paw genie wish kind of thing, is that when you just tell your GM in broad terms what you want to do, you are giving your GM to the authority and ability to make it happen however they see fit, whereas if you're very detailed in character saying exactly what you want and mean to say, you know, there's a lot less room for the GM to twist that. Not like any GM should be purposefully twisting it to be negative, that would be a really jerk move. Uh, but yeah, just one of the sort of cons of role-playing. And obviously, there is slightly less immersion this way. Obviously, that means less to some people. I, I really like to be immersed in the game. Uh, and it's not immersion-breaking, you know? Like I said, you don't need to be charismatic to have a charismatic moment with your character. And especially if everyone is joining in on that group storytelling fantasy, then your description will be enough. Especially if they know you and they've, you've been playing that way for a while. It might be jarring at first if you never really speak in character, but after a while, especially if it's a long-term group, you're getting to know each other, you're getting to know how each other plays, you start to accept it and you start to immerse yourself that way. You know, you learn to play with that person. And that's something that I didn't even plan to talk about today, but we're going to. Learning to play with your group is important. You know, it's not something that happens during the first session. That's why a lot of people like to talk about session zero, and session zero definitely helps with this. Personally, I don't think you know your group until you've played at least five sessions with them. You've seen them in roleplay, you've seen them in combat, you've seen them in exploration, you've seen them everywhere, you've seen how they play for hours, and the more you play with the same group, the better you get at playing with that group. Me and my personal group of friends just started playing together with this specific selection of friends um, at the beginning of 2020-ish, maybe about a few months into quarantine. Uh, and when we first started, you know, it was, it was a little awkward. We didn't know exactly what each other liked, didn't know exactly what each other wanted out of the game. But now, a year later, we're on our third campaign together, and I know them, obviously I knew them as friends, but now I know them as players. And that's making our games much better. All of them are role players with an E. You know, they like to get into character, talk in character, and do everything in character. And obviously that makes it easier. If everybody at the table plays the same way, it makes the game a lot more fluid. But that does not mean one way is better than the other, and it doesn't mean that role players and role players can't get along. <laughs>
So yeah, there's my ramble for the day. I hope you guys really agree with me here because I feel like if you don't agree, you're just being a jerk. <laughs> if you are trying to say that one of these ways of playing is better than the other, you're just wrong, you know? It's completely subjective and it's up to the player to determine which one is better for them. You can absolutely say role playing is better for me personally, but you cannot say role playing is better determinately. Is that the word? I don't know. That's just my thoughts on it. I would love to hear yours down in the comments below. So thank you for taking 10 minutes out of your day to listen to me ramble on my couch. I really like this. It's been kind of therapeutic lately, I'm not gonna lie. Just turning on the camera, sitting on the couch, and chatting with you guys. So thank you for giving me the opportunity, and thank you for watching them. They've been doing really well, and I appreciate that a lot. I want to give a shout out to my Patreon. If you would like to join these fantastic people scrolling up the side of the screen, there is a link in the description to the No Nat Ones Patreon page. There you can get a load of new homebrew. There should be a new one coming out in the next few weeks. I've been trying to bust one out, but when I'm not looking at the rules every day, it actually gets a lot harder to homebrew stuff. So sorry that's been delayed. But any pledge of $10 or more gets access to all of my past PF2 homebrew, as well as any new ones that are coming out in the future. So thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for watching. And you know, if you're feeling if you're feeling generous, maybe you'll like the video and push it in the algorithm. Maybe you'll even subscribe to the channel. We're getting kind of close to 15,000, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no nat ones.